Hi, I'm Lauren Beal, a reporter for the Los Angeles Times Business Section, and I'm here today to talk a little bit more in depth about the houses in this week's hot property column. And my guest is Drew Delahosa from the Real Estate Brokerage, the Brokerage Real Estate Group in Beverly Hills. Welcome, Drew. Hi, hi, Lauren. How are you? I'm good. You know, we're going to start off this week looking at. Uh, property that Leanne Rhymes and Eddie Sebrian bought in Hidden Hills and we hear about a lot of properties you know selling for half what the asking price was but this property seems to be somewhat of a bargain because it actually had sold in the past for 5.75 million and they got it for 3 million so I think that's not not too shabby uh, you know it's a nice gated community was curious uh, to see what you think if they got a good deal for this this two two acres yeah, love. I love uh, Hidden Hills. It's uh, a lot of celebrities and athletes have been moving out there for the privacy. It's got a, a laid-back uh, kind of family-friendly atmosphere for a gated community. Uh, unlike, uh, let's say, Beverly Park, where all the homes are gates behind gates behind gates. Um, I was uh, surprised to see that uh, it had been on the market as long as it had been. They were asking, I think, six point. Uh, one million for it. It was a bank short sale and for people who don't know a bank short sale means that you have to negotiate with the bank to get them to agree less than what's owed on the property for you to close the sale. Typically a bank will only take 10 percent below market value. Um, I think that Leanne and Eddie Cyprian got a very good deal on this property. Uh, your assessment of it is right. Um, they probably should have paid a million, million and a half more for the house uh, when they stepped into it. Um, if you want to uh, get another house in the same neighborhood, uh, Ozzy Osbourne and his wife Sharon have their house on the market uh, for a couple of years for about $12 million. And, uh, and if you like amazing houses, the, the uh, Drake, the rapper, purchased a house for 12 million or 7 million, 7.7 .7 million. It was originally they're asking 27 million for it. You got it for 7 million, and it's a mini Playboy Mansion that's also in Hidden Hills. Very nice. Well, I'm uh, uh, interested that they could get that uh, for such a cheap price because I know that you know it's not uncommon uh, for homes to go there for over 10 million. So that was pretty impressive to me. Yeah. Now, uh, the next home we're going to look at is. Um, uh, home that actress Misha, Misha Barton has been trying to sell and now has decided to lease out. And she'd like to get a uh, tenant for 35000 a month. Uh, this is in what we call the Beverly Crest area. You may have another definition as, a, as an agent. And I'm curious what you think about this at that price. It's almost 10,000 square feet. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a nice house. It's described in the MLS as a Spanish style. I think it's more Tuscan. Um, the designer, whoever decorated, uh, felt that if a little faux painting is good, then a lot of faux painting must be great. Uh -huh. and, I, and I think that may be the biggest drawback of the house, is that it, it, the faux painting is so extensive that the house looks like uh, a movie set more than an authentic, genuine house. Um, if you could get the whole thing repainted, uh, it would probably uh, lease quite quickly, and it would probably also sell. Um, the area uh, is called Beaumont Estates. That's what realtors call it, and it's a pretty recent community uh, where they're still building homes. Uh, it's gated. There's a security gate, not a guard. Press the keypad, buzzed in. Um, the price on the house is is. Um, as far as leasing goes, is on the high end. I'm going to give your, your listeners a tip. Um, rents in Los Angeles are generally half a percent for a per month, half a percent of the value of the property. And that gives you the monthly rent. And I checked the value on this know, property. I didn't know that. That's good to know. <laughs> I checked the value on this property, and several different automated uh, valuation services on the internet put it at between four and six million dollars, which would suggest to rent between $22,000 a month and $33,000 a month. So she's asking more than, I think, the high end of the range for her rent. And the house has got sort of aesthetic drawbacks uh, with, the, with the painting. If I was representing a client, 
I would I would probably say don't go over 2200 2300 23,000 a month rather unless she agrees to repaint the house and then maybe go as high as is 25,000 a month for the property but they're they're asking a lot for it it's it's a nice neighborhood it's at the high end uh, geographically of Beverly Hills what we call Beverly Hills post office uh, most people in the community just call it Beverly Hills but it's got the 9021 zip code but it's not technically in Beverly Hills and uh, some of the neighbors in the area uh, include uh, Linda Evans, um, Hal Holbrook, and John Stamos. Super, it sounds like a great area and you know those interiors do look a, a little bit um, specific so I can imagine a tenant might want a little bit of change there. Now next we look at the home that Deborah Messing sold and I have to say she fooled me on this one. She listed it at 11.95, uh, she sold it at 11.4 million so half a million less which uh, I think is pretty good um, and she sold it in less than a month. Now the thing that oh, the reason I didn't think this was going to happen is it's a Paul Williams designed house on the outside very traditional a very sought-after designer among celebrities uh, older home but the inside uh, was all her so um, anyway I was surprised and I was wrong she she she, I think, got a pretty penny for that house. What do you think about that quick sale? I, I'm, uh, I got excited when I saw this. It's, um, it's very uncommon for somebody to get a house sold that quickly over $10 million. Uh, you usually need competing bids. So my first thought was maybe she priced it too low. Maybe she left some money on the table, and that's why it sold so quickly somebody saw a bargain. But the more I, I looked at it, one of my, my complaints about older homes uh, even though Paul Williams designed lovely homes with lovely floor plans is that they tend to have small closets and small bathrooms They're, and the kitchens are, are a little quirky and out of date um, so you look for a remodel on a house like this and uh, the MLS data says that the master bedroom had twin or dual bathrooms a his and her bathroom configuration and a large master closet so it sounds like the house was either designed well back in the day or it's been renovated to the standards that people appreciate now. Well, I, um, think, I think that um, what I could find online about the interior, interiors, and here's the, an exterior, um, I think she had done a lot of work because I had found some older photos and did not recognize the house inside when I, when I looked at it. So um, she, she did not want exterior or interior photos with the listing. So there's just this exterior but you can see the traditional the traditional mm -hmm. styling okay and the um, the question is whether or not she got a good deal for the house um, or or uh, sold it too cheaply so I looked at the numbers and the average house in this community sells for eleven hundred dollars a square foot in the last six months and she got seventeen hundred almost eighteen hundred dollars a square foot for the property she got it at the top of the market so it's very hard to make an argument that she undersold it. I think what this is an example of is if you price a property exactly right, it will sell quickly. Yeah, I, I, it was pretty exciting to see it sell so quickly. And I've noticed this a lot right now. The market is incredibly fast, so it's, it's, great, it's great for the column. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have lots of properties coming up all the time. Yeah. Sounds, you know, there's a house down the street from this that's been on the market for years. Uh, a music uh, mogul Freddie DeMann who was Madonna's manager mm -hmm. and uh, executive at, uh, at uh, Maverick Records he originally had his house it's a Spanish style house with a, a nice courtyard swimming pool uh, a guest house and a separate driveway and interest and gate for the guest house it's asking 22 million he's dropped it to 19 it's been on the market two or three years uh, so he's at he's at 19 now and I know a house that's virtually identical uh, that was recently on the market for 17 million. So I think he needs to come down a little bit more. But there's still houses available on that street. It's a really amazing market for us. So it, it makes it fun. Uh, next, we're going to look at a, a home that that was on the market for quite a while, uh, owned by producer and director Bud Yorkin, just sold for 19.5 million, and the new buyer has already put it um, up for lease, which surprised me. And it is. Um, 
they're asking 99,000 a month. I think that's $100,000. Uh, curious um, how, we, how they did on selling and what you think of that uh, lease price. Oh, well, uh, I, I'd have to do a very fast math on the, uh, on the lease. I didn't know it was up for lease. I, yeah, you, it was just came up. I didn't either. Sorry to spring that one. Give half a percent rule. <laughs> It'll give you an idea whether or not the lease is reasonable. Um, the the house was originally on the market three years ago when I toured it um, for forty nine million dollars. It's in Homeby Hills. I was about to say the estate section of Homeby Hills, but there's nothing but estates in Homeby Hills. No condos, no convenience stores, no offices. Just fabulous estates with amazing amounts of land. And, and here, here's a picture of it if people want to take a look. Go ahead, Drew. And it's a nice traditional home. Um, there's a nice brick surround on the pool. There's also a sunken tennis court that is difficult to see from the house. Uh, that's how much land they have on this, this property. Um, the house also has a 35 millimeter screening room, which is a, a very nice amenity for the movie moguls uh, out there if anybody's still using uh, film to show movies these days. <laughs> um, the house has got a nice provenance. This was uh, formerly the um, Bugsy Siegel house. He was a gangster who came out here to, to run the rackets um, in the 40s and 50s for Murder Incorporated, Meyer Lansky and, and, uh, and uh, Lucky Luciano back east. Um, the price of the house. Yeah, you would think if he came down $30 million, that the person buying the house got got a deal, but the the house was honestly overpriced to begin with, and this is a, this is a case of premium pricing. Uh, he didn't know what the house was worth. He knows that these estates are rare, and probably didn't want to leave money on the table. And and frankly, a producer of, of Bud Yorkin's caliber, all in the family, the Jeffersons, he doesn't need the money, and he can wait till he gets his price. He also sold at the top of the market uh, in the last. Uh, six months, um, the average house sold for $1,100 per square foot in, in his area, and he got $1,800 a square foot. So he got the, the top of the market for it, and it deserves. Fantastic. That, that's wonderful. Um, I, I was curious about that coming from such a high, you know, a high price, but he's still still got a good deal. I, I think so. He's probably not too happy about it. but. <laughs> Uh, and then it, we're moving to Hollywood Hills West. Uh, this is actually a former home of Mar Marvin Hamlish, but since he just died last year and um, the composer is pretty well known for uh, the way we were and the sting, things like that, I thought it was uh, worth including in the column. Uh, this is a different part of town, so we're looking at a $1.75 like million dollar, uh, listing price or you could lease it for about 8000 a month. And mm -hmm. That's just about 2,500 square feet. So how how are they uh, comparing here with the market on this one? Um, okay, this is uh, uh, the neighborhood I grew up in. You're and, kidding. Uh, wow. No. And I, <laughs> I sold a house last year uh, to a producer of, um, of The Office and his wife who's an architect. Uh, they're going to uh, remodel and build a dream house there, just right around the corner from this house. Um, so I'm very familiar with the prices in this neighborhood. Uh, this house it, has got a, a problem. It's obviously been updated, but they've taken out they've taken out the ceilings, the drop ceilings, so you have rafter ceilings, makes the house lighter, more open. Um, but it's like they were got a sale at the stone yard and tile yard. Every oh, yeah. in this house is covered with stack stone or or tile. The complete uh, backyard. The um, um, the bar, the the um, uh, outdoor kitchen, the um, <laughs> the <fire>. indoor <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> yeah, the indoor kitchen exactly, <laughs> and and the tile work. They have twelve by twelve tiles in the bathroom, which are a little out of fashion, and they went from the floor all the way to the ceiling, rather than stopping at the wainscoting. So it the house. Somebody attempted to renovate this house. They picked the espresso finishes. They picked the stainless steel uh, appliances. They got the stacked stone. They got the, the new floors, the French doors and the windows. But somehow it just doesn't all come together the way it should. Mm -hmm. And and they in in Laurel Canyon, uh, it's a great place for flippers. 
and renovators because you can buy a dated home at $350 a square foot and if you do a nice job you can sell it at $450, $650 a square foot afterwards. So there's lots of room to make profit and hard to make mistakes unless you've got bad taste. And this house at, at 1.7 million, it looks like a builder renovated it rather than a designer. And uh, I don't think it's at the top of the market. It's priced at the top of the market. I don't think it deserves to get that. Realistically, I think the house is worth about 1.1 million. And that's what I would advise my clients to pay. And that would leave a little Excellent. room to actually take out some of the work they did and, and fix it up. Super. Well, I'm going to trust her on that one because anytime I try to guess about these things, I I, I miss them. The last, <laughs> the last house that we're going to look at is uh, one I had a lot of fun with because it is owned by Harvey Levine of TMZ and we reported it first so TMZ is really active in celebrity real estate coverage and it's just um, um, you know having a little bit of fun online but then once I finally saw the house I really liked it <laughs> um, it's also Hollywood Hills West it's 5-3 which is a lot of money uh, and nearly 3,000 square feet what do you think of this one uh, um, bravo on scooping TMZ on this story that that really really excited me the morning I saw your uh, your article on that and I and I went and checked I went to see if it was anywhere on their website and and uh, they didn't have any mention of it. Um, I love TMZ. It's a guilty pleasure for me and and uh, I wish all the best for Harvey to to sell his house for for what he wants to sell it for. Um, they have obviously staged this house immaculately. It's it's got uh, a soft. Uh, uh, pale green uh, uh, paints and butter, soft butter colored uh, uh, paint jobs throughout. It's a 1937 Spanish revival. Uh, it's what you think of for a California house. Uh, it's got great architectural details. Yeah, I, I love this like Logia area uh, right beside the pool. Really the, the nice gorgeous. looking. Yeah. And a large grassy yard, which is uncommon for a hillside property. Um, Homes in, in this area average $750 a square foot or so for, um, for a sale price. The top house to sell, the most expensive house to sell in the area in the last six months got a little over $1,000 a square foot. That's the top for, for the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Harvey's asking $1,700 a square foot for his house. Yikes. And it's not as nice as some of the houses that have sold for less than half that in his neighborhood. So he's asking a premium for this house. And again, I think what we have is a case of, of, of uh, somebody rich who doesn't have to sell his house right away, who's going to wait to get his price. And um, I hope he understands it, that it's going to take his realtor a very long time before <laughs> he sells this house. I hear you on that. You know. Um checking the property records he paid under uh, less than a million and that was uh, back in the late 90s so although he's put a lot of money into it you can tell he, I would think he's got a little wiggle room there yeah there, there's some room there's, he's gonna be it seems to, I'm thinking because he's an attorney he's going to be a tough negotiation I bet he is I bet you're right about that well thank you so much for joining uh, us again this is your second visit and really appreciate the insights on these houses and glad we had a little, little chance to take the, reader, the readers through them, so, so to speak. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you again soon. All right, bye, Lauren. Bye-bye.